It's been a while since I've made one of these videos, but now that I've finally graduated from George Tech, I can finish off this mini series. This will probably be a bit of a longer video, so I'm gonna leave timestamps down in the description if you just wanna skip around and look at the specific classes that you're interested in. And other than that, let's get started by looking at the first semester of my senior year of college. Every computer science student at Georgia Tech is required to take an ethics course before they graduate, and in my experience this was low stress and was actually a pretty enjoyable experience. Most of the work for the class was based off of having discussions with classmates as well as writing weekly reflection papers, and then on top of that we also had a final paper at the end of the semester that gave a lot of flexibility in letting you choose what topic you wanted to discuss. Generally you won't take this until your senior year of college, although I'm sure there's exceptions to that rule, and regardless of what industry you end up going into, I definitely feel like this class will end up being relevant and useful to you, at least when it comes to all of your ethical decision making. All Georgia Tech students are required to take a health class before they graduate, and you have the choice of taking either APPH 1040 or this class, which is APPH 1050. The main difference between the courses is that APPH 1050 has an exercise component. What that means is of the two days per week that you're having class, one day is a lecture where you're learning about something like exercise, nutrition, or sleep, and the other day is actually the exercise component of the class where you're going to physically be lifting weights or running or swimming or doing yoga or anything else like that. There's several different sections that focus on different activities. I ended up taking the one focused on lifting weights. Only problem with that was the whole class was remote so we never actually went into the CRC and that meant everything we did kind of was based around body weight exercises. Not that that was useless, but I don't think I got the same experience as someone who normally would take it in person. If you had your own weights, you could integrate them into some of the exercises we did. Unfortunately, I did not have weights, and I really don't think I got that much out of the class, but I do feel like overall it wasn't that hard, and it was somewhat enjoyable, and I think it probably would be a lot better during a normal in-person semester. Going into this class, I really had no idea what to expect, and unfortunately, I don't really think the class had enough structure in its lectures. The grading was entirely based around homework assignments, which for me was a welcome change compared to doing all these quizzes and tests in other classes. There was also no coding in the CS class. Everything was either diagramming or writing proofs, whether that be for finite automatons, Turing machines, regular expressions, or really anything else we talked about. It's definitely one of the classes that I feel if you were willing to put in the effort, you could do well in. But unfortunately, there also felt like a bit of a disconnect between what we learned in lectures and what we were actually being tested on in the homeworks. Since the class was remote, participation was pretty low in the class. They did try to mitigate this by having breakout rooms, but ultimately more and more people kept dropping off throughout the course of the semester to the point where very few people were showing up by the end of the class. Heading into my senior year, this was a class that I was very excited to take, and overall I was not disappointed with the material as well as the pacing of the course. Now, admittedly, not everything in the course related directly back to robot planning, but I do think, especially when it was appropriate, the professor did a pretty good job of tying in the algorithms and the things we were learning to real-world implementations and examples. The biggest issue with the class ended up being with some of the assignments as well as what seemed to be a bit of a disconnect between the professor and the students. There were some topics that were rushed through or explained a little bit too abstractly that ended up playing a pretty big role in later assignments or tests, and as a result that led to a lot of confusion and people trying to get clarification on things that probably should have been explained better in the first place. Additionally, for a number of the homework assignments, there were either incorrect instructions or mistakes to the point where I think the most frustrating homework assignment I ever did in all of college came from this course, and unfortunately a lot of these things probably should have been caught ahead of time by either the TAs or the professor, and it just felt like we were guinea pigs trying out these homework assignments before they were really ready to go and polished assignments. I don't want to scare anyone off from taking the class, I would definitely take it again, and I did enjoy the course. I'm just hoping in the future that some of these headaches will be removed as the TAs and professors work out the kinks. And overall, I really do think it's a good class and it's definitely worth taking if you're interested in that kind of stuff. This is probably one of the most unique CS classes I took in my time at Georgia Tech, partially due to the lack of tests, but also because of the hands-on nature of the class, we were constantly working with electronics in a way that I've never done in any other class. If you enjoy working with Arduinos, LEDs, motors, building your own smart devices, any of that kind of stuff, this is definitely the class you should be taking. Admittedly, especially because it was so hands-on, there were parts of this class that were a challenge to do remotely, like learning how to solder in our dorm rooms or 3D printing, but in the future I would imagine that would be less of an issue than it was when I took the class. 
Something else that was really interesting about the course is that half the grade came from coming up with an idea for a prototype and then actually implementing it. So for me, I decided to make something like a Philips Hue smart light, except with a few enhancements on top of it. And I liked the way that mine turned out, but some people had some truly crazy ideas that they implemented for their projects. Especially if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I would definitely recommend it regardless of your skill level. I came in with very little working knowledge of Arduinos and I had absolutely no problems taking the class. This was another class that I think could have benefited from a more structured curriculum. Unfortunately, the whole class was based around assigned readings from week to week. And the problem with that was there was no consistency between whether the readings were relevant at our skill level or interesting at all. So it was pretty hit or miss from week to week whether you would enjoy the class or actually even get anything out of it. Without having any real trajectory for the lectures, it made it a little bit harder to see where things were going and eventually maybe you'd get to another topic and make those connections. But ahead of time, you didn't necessarily understand why we were talking about things and how they were gonna be useful in the future. This was another class that didn't have any tests, which I really enjoyed. Although we did have weekly quizzes as well as weekly written assignments just to make sure we were actually doing our readings. On top of that, we also had a final paper due at the end that made us connect cognitive science with some other discipline. This wasn't a class I needed to take to graduate. I took it as an elective and unfortunately I was a bit underwhelmed and kind of wish I took something else instead. Now, I think if it was in person and we'd had some more discussions between the professor and students, that would have helped engagement at least, and also having a more solid curriculum, I think that would have made the class a lot more enjoyable and probably would make it more worth taking in the future. For anyone who's watched my video where I talked about the classes I took in my junior year, Game AI is basically an extension on top of Intro to AI, also taught by Mark Riddell. Despite not exactly being an avid gamer or being really into game development, this actually surprisingly ended up being one of my favorite courses of the semester. The assignments were generally interesting and benefited from having auto graders, and on top of that, the lectures were some of the most engaging I had in the entirety of remote learning, and I would imagine in person they'd probably be even more interesting. My only real gripe with the class, which was unintentional and was later addressed, was that the take-home test didn't really do a very good job of assessing what we learned in the class. I have to give him credit though, Mark took full accountability for what happened and was the most responsive professor I have ever seen on Piazza. Literally the number of questions he was answering was insane. And if you're looking for a fun AI related elective to take that's not gonna be too stressful, I would definitely recommend this class. I went out on a limb a little bit by deciding to take a law elective for the first time in my senior year. But I really do think this was the perfect introduction to law for someone who's not planning on going into it, but just wants a little bit of background. The course was mostly about IP or intellectual property discussing things like patents, copyrights, trade secrets, trademarks, and some other things on top of that. And I actually really found the readings as well as the content in the course pretty interesting and much more engaging than I expected it to be. At least when I took the class, it was being co-taught by two great professors who I would definitely recommend taking any classes with again in the future. And the only real downside I can think about of this course was the way the code analysis project was handled. Group projects, especially when you're doing remote learning, can definitely be a bit of a challenge in college. And unfortunately, this project was worth a huge amount of the grade, but was also intentionally very vague about the requirements. And we ended up doing really well, but it was a very stressful experience trying to coordinate the team and what we were working on, while also not really knowing what was expected from the professors and just not wanting to completely self-sabotage our grades. Overall though, I really did enjoy this course and the only thing I would really change is that code analysis project, making it a little bit more obvious in terms of the requirements of what we were supposed to be doing. But I would definitely recommend this to anyone who has any interest at all in computer law. It is definitely a great introduction. Since I knew I was about to graduate and I was gonna need to start managing my finances and start doing some investing, this was a class I was really excited to take although it ended up being a little bit underwhelming. We definitely learned a lot of by the book information and some of the fundamentals of investing, which I think is definitely important, but I wish there had also been a bit more of an emphasis on how to apply that to actually getting results in the market, something I feel like we didn't really do enough in that course. At least for me, one of the most fun parts of the course was paper trading in a simulated portfolio. Now you can actually just access that tool online. You don't have to go through Georgia Tech to be able to do that. So if that's something you wanna do, I definitely recommend checking it out. One thing I'll say though is if you're interested in investing, I would definitely recommend you try something like that first without spending your own actual money. They'll definitely remove some of the stress and also just takes away some of the chances of you losing money when you don't really know what you're doing in the market. I do plan on incorporating some of the knowledge I gained from this class into my own investing in the next couple of weeks and months, but I do wish we'd had more of a hands-on approach because I think that'd make me feel a lot more comfortable and a little less tentative about entering the market and starting to invest my own money.
Fortunately, this was an elective that really did live up to my expectations. I had previously taken a psychology course in my sophomore year and I really enjoyed it and I'd hoped that before I graduated I could take another one and this was the opportunity to do that. Obviously there was a bit of overlap between social psychology and psychology 101, but I will say that this focused a lot more on the interactions between people and groups in a way that was applicable to real life. Despite the challenges of virtual learning though, I think the pacing for the class was excellent and I think the homework assignments as well as the tests did a good job of assessing what we learned without being overwhelming. Obviously I'm not going into psychology or social psychology, but I would definitely recommend taking a course like this if you have any interest at all in it. Then again, you're only going to get out of it what you put into it, but in my experience these were some of my favorite classes I took outside of CS while I was in college. Alright, obviously I had to skim over a lot of things, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button, I really appreciate it. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for new videos coming very soon. That's it, thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next one.